All right, so yeah, good morning, everybody. Uh, happy to see you all on this Saturday. Uh, so before I get started, yeah, I want to also get a lay of the land. Um, who here has heard of ZeroX before? Oh, awesome, okay. And then who has built with ZeroX? Either using the API or the SDK, nobody? Okay, well, that's great. And then who, how about in their day-to-day -day lives or at the hackathon are building uh, anything related to NFTs? Okay, awesome. So yeah, today I'll be talking about how you can add NFT swapping into your application. So whether that's a web app or mobile app. Um, and so who am I? I'm Jessica, I'm a developer advocate at ZeroX. Um, and so let's get started. So for the agenda today, I'll be talking the first half about um, giving you an overview of how ZeroX works, and then that's more conceptual, and then the second half will be uh, diving into code of how to implement the NFT swap SDK. So overview of ZeroX. So at ZeroX, we believe that eventually all forms of value will become tokenized on public blockchains. And so our grand vision here is that we're creating the tokenized world where all value can flow freely. So what this means in practice is we're building the public infrastructure, infrastructure that allows these tokens to be more accessible, more liquid, and enable the creation of new markets that couldn't have existed before. So if we take a look at the Xerox ecosystem, um, we have essentially two players. We have our market makers on your right. So these are makers that are supplying liquidity um, of these assets into the market, and then takers on Oh, oops, you're right, uh, the other side, uh, who are picking up that liquidity. So makers, you can think of as DEXs, AMMs, professional market makers. So you might have heard of you know, Uniswap, um, Banker, Curve. And then takers on the other side are applications such as wallets and exchanges uh, that you've probably used before, such as uh, MetaMask, uh, Matcha, um, Coinbase Wallet, and many others. So Xerox, we sit at the intersection between these two players, and we provide a protocol, an API, and a set of other developer tools to enable these uh, interactions. And we build on top of uh, a number of different blockchains. So starting with Ethereum, expanding out to uh, currently seven uh, EVM-compatible chains and looking to build out to more. So high-level overview set, let's look at how Xerox works. So this is a simplified version of our tech stack. So at the very bottom are the blockchains. And then on top of that is our Xerox protocol. So this is just a set of audited smart contracts that enable the swapping between uh, the market makers and the takers. On top of that are our developer tools. So we have our Xerox API and our NFT swap SDK, which I'll be talking more specifically about during this talk. So the API is specifically for ERC-20 interactions. So what we do is we aggregate liquidity across all these pools and service the best price so that DeFi developers can plug that into their application. So think of that as your Google flights um, of DeFi swapping. And the NFT swap SDK um, is what does what it says, is we help uh, easily plug in swap capability into your application. And on top of that is the apps that I've been talking about. So here's, again, a simplified version of how the trade happens and what makes Xerox unique. So first, we have our market maker um, who creates the order. So let me let the GIF restart. So they create the order indicating what they're interested in selling. Um, once they've confirmed that, they sell it, and then they pass it over to the taker. With the taker, if they approve that sale, they sign it, and they pass it on chain to our Xerox protocol. So the Xerox smart, logic, smart contract logic confirms that um, all, the, all the values are correct, and if they are, they atomically swap the asset between the maker and taker wallet. So what's really unique about this is that um, all the order uh, construction and passing off happens off-chain, and only the settlement happens on-chain. So this means that all that stuff that's happening off-chain is free, and only the settlement no logic needs to be uh, saved on-chain. Okay, so let's talk specifically about um, NFT exchange and the state that it is now. So essentially, I want to set the stage for why swapping capability is important. And we are actually quite early um, in, terms of, in terms of the evolution of NFT exchange. 
So to simplify it, the way that NFT exchange works now is that there's very limited capability interactivity, and we interact with this exchanging process in one-size-fits-all marketplaces. So what this looks like in practice is you know, we can view our NFTs um, in our wallets, perhaps in a PFP, uh, but we can only view them. We can only read them. And in order to interact with them or trade with them, we're pushed off to these large marketplaces. And there's nothing wrong with these marketplaces, but there's so much more that could be embedded into, um, in, embedded into our app, current app experiences now. So if we think about that and look forward to what could happen, you know, as NFTs evolve beyond just JPEGs, um, as they expand to um, more use cases like contracts, insurance, how, how will those interactions happen with the current state that we exist, um, current state that exchange exists now? Well, the future state involves building more in-app experiences, as well as um, looking forward to more community-centric marketplaces and direct peer-to-peer -peer exchanges. So if we take a look at that in-app experience of um, that Twitter profile picture, a very simplified example could be you find a profile picture that you're interested in, you can click on it, you can directly swap with the, with the owner of that uh, profile picture. Um, other examples that we look at are community-centric marketplaces and that peer-to-peer -peer exchange functionality. So think of your favorite uh, NFT collection right now. Often you go to their website, you can view all of that information about them, but when you click on it to, to, to purchase it, you're again pushed off to the open sea. What if Azuki had the shop functionality directly in their website? And then up at the top there is one of the projects uh, that's funded by the Xerox DAO. It's called uh, Trader.xyz. So what they do is actually peer-to-peer -peer exchange of, um, of NFTs. So you can be in your chat, chat app. Uh, you can send an order to your friend, and they can directly, uh, you can directly swap your NFTs in, within your chat app. Um, and I feel like the, the expansion of this uh, can expand beyond, again, just art. Okay, so with that set, uh, let's actually dive into the code implementation of the NFT swap SDK. All right, so we'll be focusing again specifically um, on this piece. And what this is, is a really simple TypeScript SDK that allows you just to trade NFTs in a few lines of code. And so why are we building on the Xerox protocol? Well, first off, again, Xerox protocol, when you create your orders, they're free. Um, and then, the Xerox protocol has the most gas-efficient um, gas uh, swap capabilities compared to all the other NFT, uh, NFT marketplace protocols. We also natively have collection and property-based orders, meaning you can easily sweep the floor on any collection or specifically say, you know, I want to buy an item within this collection based off of these properties and traits. And then we also have instant royalties built in, so you can directly plug in to say, when someone purchases this NFT, I want fees to go back to the creator or maybe to my DAO. And lastly, we're default by multi-chain. Okay, so simplified again, how does a swap work? I'll kind of zoom through this, this since we've seen it before. So we have your maker who has the NFT and then the taker who says, hey, I have some USDC that I want to trade with you. So this is simplified code, I'll expand it, expand it out to more in depth a little bit later. So the maker, they create the order using uh, the NFT swaps build order method. So here they've said what asset they're interested in swapping, uh, the, t the takers assets, and then they've put in their own wallet. So we see a similar step where they sign the order. So they're using the sign order method. And then once they've confirmed that, it passes over to the taker. The taker picks it up and they said, yeah, I like this trade. I'm gonna also, I'm gonna fill it. And once it's filled, that's all that happens. And we handle the logic in the back behind, in the back end and swaps complete. So summarize, maker creates, they sign, and the taker picks up and fills and submits it on chain. And so you've probably seen this, you probably uh, recall this, uh, this flow. Okay, so how does it work in code now? 
So it's a very simple yarn, either yarn or npm install for this package. Um, and we set up some, 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 sorry, some configurations. Um, we'll just supply a provider, a signer, a chain ID, um, and then we'll just create an instance of the NFT swap v4. Okay, so from here, again, very simple flow that we saw before. Um, I'm just gonna break, break it down by code. So we have our code here. You know, we have the cool cat that we're interested in swapping, um, the, token, the token address uh, for the USDC. Again, the same, same steps that we saw earlier. So the maker creates the order. Um, they instantiate an SDK instance uh, for themselves. They've set up the provider, the signer for themselves, the chain ID, um, as, a, as well as their wallet. And then if they need to approve uh, the, the NFT that they're interested in selling. All right, so from there, they're using the build order functionality. And so they set up this build order, uh, this build order piece. And then they just sign it. So they sign the order, and so now it's fillable. So any taker um, can pick it up. So the taker finds it and they say, all right, I'm gonna do the same process. I'm gonna create um, an instance for myself. I'm gonna approve um, the USDC that I'm gonna pass over to you. And then from there, they sign it, they fill it, and then we can let them know that the swap was completed. All right, so in this previous examples, we saw like we knew who the taker was. So what if a taker isn't immediately available? Well, the, the team that created this, uh, Trader.xyz, they have a free publicly hosted order book. Um, so for those of you who are um, experienced with market making and taking, order book means a market maker, different market makers can post that they have these orders available and they post it to this book. And then a taker can come along and look through the book and say, hey, this is an order that I'm interested in. I'm gonna fill this one. So this functionality is uh, really powerful for say auctions. So if you're using OpenSea, you click that bid or that offer, what's happening in the back end is literally just an order. It's an order being placed on an order book. Um, so someone has placed a bid for something, it's on an order book, someone else can come along and pick up that bid. So this is also quite straightforward. So posting on an order book, we're following those same three steps as before. We're just gonna have the maker post their order on the order book. So we see the same steps that we saw before. The maker creates the order. They're signing it. And then they're just gonna use um, the post order method. So from here, the order, sorry, the taker will look through this order book. So they can either look through the orders, or they can look through the order book to find an order that they're interested in. So they can either do this um, by searching through the order book based off of uh, certain criteria that they're interested in. Alternatively, if they know specifically which, um, which order that they want to take, they can just put that nonce in. All right, so once that order is found, they'll again do the same steps, fill the order, and then it's swapped. Okay, so I just want to add on some interesting additional features uh, that this uh, SDK covers. And uh, again, this is not extensive um, of all that it can do. I definitely recommend checking out the documentation. Uh, the team's done a good job of uh, providing thorough examples on that. So first off, the royalties and fees. Um, so royalties and fees mean that we can, um, we can provide back to the, the creators who are creating, um, creating these uh, interesting projects for us, as well as maybe paying back to the, the, the application that is um, creating, creating the swap capability. So fees just comes um, added in as, uh, at, <laughs> when you create your, sorry, when you set up your build order, um, you just plug in the fee here. So the, the fee is paid by the buyer of the NFT. Um, they're paid in addition to the original uh, ERC20 token amount that they paid for uh, the NFT itself, and you can actually add several fees. So in this example, you're paying your fee to your DAO. Again, you could pop it off to your, um, the, your app team. Um, 
So I talked about a little bit earlier with the collection-based orders, which allows you to bid on any NFT from a specific collection. Uh, so what that looks like in practice is you're just using the build order collection method. And then from there, uh, you'll say, you'll give it a certain uh, criteria and the amount that you're interested in paying up for it. All right, yeah, make your take your asset and the wallet. All right, so yeah, just high-level overview of what we covered. Uh, so quite, a, um, quite a bit, so we just went through a really simple NFT to ERC-20 swap. And note that that actually can be backwards. So you know, the maker could say, I have this amount of USDC. I have like you know, 2,000 USDC. I'm looking for an NFT. So that could be swapped as well. We talked about how to use a hosted order book. And then lastly, we covered the additional features of the uh, SDK. Um, for resources, I highly recommend checking out uh, the swap SDK documentation. I'll share some links uh, later. Um, again, they, co they cover, oops, they cover in detail the, uh, in detail the examples that I, I've shown uh, in this presentation. And then here are some resources. So on the left-hand side is the NFT swap um, information. I'll have a QR code later on if you uh, want to look at these. Um, and then if you have questions about that, highly recommend checking out their Discord. So their dev team is uh, very, pro very proactive there if you have questions about implementing. If you have interest in looking at ZeroX, uh, we have a set of NFT docs as well, as well as documentation about the rest of our protocol. Um, we have a blog that o overviews uh, the NFT swap functionality, goes into more detail there. We have a Discord as well, and then if you have technical questions, uh, I highly recommend checking out Stack Exchange and using the Xerox tag. Our team is really proactive there about um, answering questions. Um, and uh, as always, you know, please connect with us. Um, we're a pretty global community. And then, yeah, lastly, we are definitely hiring um, across all, all areas of the stack. Uh, if you have questions, please reach out to me on Twitter. Um, hey underscore it's underscore Jalen. Uh, and here's a QR code to the slide deck uh, if you would want any of these links. All right, and I don't know if I have any time for questions. Not sure. Okay, well, I will take a question. <laughs> Yeah. 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 He was just making a comment about essentially customizing um, NFT experiences in these marketplaces. That we can build more um, more unique experiences when oh, sorry, more unique NFT marketplace experiences. Whereas now OpenSea is becoming the, the Walmart. He says of uh, of NFT purchases. Yeah. Definitely agree with that. Um, yes. Hmm. Um, so, yes, <laughs> yeah, because once it's, so we can add royalties af post, um, post creation. So it's upon, upon the trade, the royalty happens. So you add the fee that is paid to the creator. So the royal, yeah, the royalty is done through the fee mechanism, which happened, which is done in the trade. Okay. Um, do you have a question? Or no? Okay. Well, yeah, feel free to connect with me afterwards if you do have questions. And thanks again for your time.